So um, today my topic is about emerging the GitOps function uh, with AI. And I will talk something about how we can use AI to help GitOps. So first, let me introduce myself a bit. So I, I have been working in IBM for uh, 16 years. And I also use tool for many different open source products like OpenStack, Mesos, Kubernetes, et cetera. And I also used to be a maintainer and committer for some products as well. And now I was trying to enable the integration of some open source products with uh, uh, the products. Like I used to work for products for IBM Instana, IBM Cloud Pack, and also uh, IBM Cloud Parade. So, I was, uh, so for now I was working for the integration with AI with observability platform. So that's a self induction. And the uh, agenda for today will contain the following topics. So like what is GitOps, GitOps benefits, the pain points of GitOps, and also how we can enable AI can work with GitOps. And finally, I will share something about GitOps and AI future. So first, I want to share some Kubernetes hot topics. So based on some info that we get from KubeCon, we can see that now Kubernetes not, is not become boring. So here, the boring just mean that Kubernetes is become mature. And now we can see that people are trying to move upward, which means that people are now trying to build many applications on top of Kubernetes. Like they are trying to build some services, like for service mesh, for uh, service, for edge, for AI, machine learning. So uh, we can see that now Kubernetes is becoming a integration engine and innovation platform. So uh, previously when we talk about uh, cloud native, we usually mean that I want to use container to manage my apps. Like I can use Mesos, I can use Kubernetes, I can use Swarm. But after Kubernetes, we can see that cloud native is becoming Kubernetes native, which means that now if you talk container, you always mean, okay, I want to use Kubernetes to manage my apps. But what will be the future? Because now many people are trying to build some applications on top of Kube. So we need to check what will be the best option for the customer to manage the apps on top of Kubernetes. So maybe GitOps native will be the future. So what is GitOps? So uh, we can see that, so basically GitOps is a new pattern which can help the end, user, the end user to deploy the cloud native apps on different Kubernetes platform. Like you can use Kubernetes, you can use OpenShift, you can use Rancher, or you can use some others. So for GitOps, there are many different kind of tools that you can leverage. Like you can use uh, Argo CD, you can use Flux, you can use Jenkins, or some others. So from the picture here, we can see that with GitOps, the customer only needs to commit some PR, like they can create some YAML files or some other uh, configuration files, and then they can just commit into GitHub, and then GitOps tools like Argo CD or Flux, and they will help you to sync up all the configuration into different platforms, and then they will have to manage your app automatically, so you don't need uh, to take charge of those apps. So, so for now, and also you means that there are many different platforms that are trying to integrate with GitOps, like if you take a look at OpenShift, and you can see that now GitOps is already a built-in operator. So if you navigate to OpenShift UI, you can see that, okay, I can install GitOps using OpenShift UI. So it's pretty simple if you want to deploy a new GitOps components for your cluster. So now we can take a look at what is the benefit of GitOps. So, uh, so the first one that single source of truth, because now if you are using GitOps to manage your apps, actually you only need to commit all your code into GitHub. So you are using Git repo to manage all, all the code. And another benefit is that we can use GitOps to do some kind of audit. Like we can always check what kind of change has been made, who have make, make the change. So we can always know the whole tracing of, of the log. And also because now with Kubernetes, we can use different tags to manage the apps. Like we can use Helm, we can use YAML files, and also we can use Operator as well. So with GitOps, no matter what kind of tool that you are using, you can always leverage Flux, you can always leverage Argo CD to deploy your apps on top of different Kubernetes clusters. And another benefit of uh, GitOps is that if you want to deploy or if you want to manage some apps on Kubernetes platform, actually you don't need to install any installation component. You only need uh, to deploy GitOps there. So this means that for your Kubernetes cluster, you can only have Kubernetes, have GitOps tools, that's it. So with those two layers, you can say that, okay, I have just built a bootstrap engine for my platform. So with that, you can commit all your application, all your apps into GitHub repo. And then the Argo CD, the 
GitOps tool will help you to deploy to manage your, your apps across the whole group cluster. And, uh, and, also, um, and also, if you are using Argo CD, you may see that now Argo CD has a very good UI. Like if you have some app has been deployed, and you can always build some kind of dependency, some topology, etc., for your app, so that you will have a very clear view for your app. And besides, you can also view the deployment process. Like if there are any errors for your app, you can also check what's wrong with my app, etc. So it will be very helpful for you to debug your app. So we have just talked something about the, the benefit. Now we need to check what is, what is the pain point here. So basically for the pain points of GitOps, I want to focus on two parts. So because with GitOps, our concern is that I want to automate my app. I don't want to have any manual operations. So but now there are two points that you need manual operations. So the first one that the end user needs to know how to commit code into GitHub. And also they need to learn how to use some kind of Git command. And another one that the end user needs to create a PR into GitHub repo. And also after the PR was created, they also need some kind of a review before we merge the PR. So this is the first pinpoint. And another pinpoint is that after your app is deployed in group cluster, and you may also want to monitor the app as well. Like if there are any errors for the app, like if there are any pods got crashed, or if there are some email field to pull, and then you may also want to check what's wrong with the cluster. And after you dig the root cause of the problem, and then you may want to create another patch here to enable that your cluster can be fixed by GitOps. So this is a major pinpoint for GitOps. So basically you need to uh, manually create the patches and also you need to monitor the cluster, the system to fix all the problem for your cluster. So this is the pinpoints and uh, so what will happen if we convert GitOps and AI? So as we just talked, GitOps is using Git repos as source of truth and help end user to automate the deployments, the rollbacks, etc. So for AI, especially for the GNI and foundation models, it will help end user to generate some kind of human-like text, making compact decisions and leveraging uh, from vast data sets, etc. So when those two powerful tools converge, and they will have a lot for cloud native apps. So um, when we talk about GNI, we really mean we really think about some tools like like ChatGPT or Google Bard, etc. So with those tools, you can create a query, you can create a prompt, and the foundation models here will help you to generate the answer. But usually, I think this is not enough because if we uh, only have a kind of a QA bot, it can only help you to generate some text. It will not able to do any actions. But when we are doing some kind of GitOps, we also need some kind of action, some tools as well. Like you need to create some PR, you need to review the code, you also need to monitor the cluster as well. So with that, um, there is a concept named as agent for AI. So here I was using launching agent as a sample here. So uh, from here you can see that the difference between previous picture that um, I was trying to inject a agent between users and the foundation models here. So the user will take, will, so the user here will talk with agent and the agent will act as a proxy, talk with foundation models here and do some action based on response from foundation models. So the agent mainly contain uh, two components, including the actions and also the tools. So the action will depend on tools to do some real actions and the action and tools are usually generated by the foundation model. And it will, it will tell the chain like what kind of action and what kind of tools that you need. So you may also see that there's a connection between the output parser and also the prompt template. So uh, this will be a, uh, so the connection will lead to a loop in the agent here. So this means that for some compact for uh, this means that for some complex query, it may request that the agent talk with foundation models many times. And the foundation models need to make decision for the agent for many uh, different requests. So I think I will show you some uh, detail like how the foundation model will interact with the agent to do some uh, real things for GitOps. So the first uh, use case is that I will share some uh, uh, 
use case about how we can use AI agent to help GitOps. So this is how we can use GNI to help end user to do some routine tasks, like mainly for code review. So this can help the team to focus more on the high value activities to improve time to market. So from the picture here, we can see that we are trying to introduce a review bot here. And the review bot is actually kind of agent that we just talked. So the agent will mainly have two functions. So the first function is that the review bot can help to review the code and also post some comments. So after the user create a patch, and the patch will be committed into Git, and then the webhook will notify the, the uh, review bot here like a PR has been created, and then the bot will pull all the changes that you have been made in the repo, and it will also post all the code uh, and talk with foundation model here. And the foundation model here will have us to review the code changes and also it will pro and, and also it will have to generate the review here. And then the review bot here after it gets the uh, comments and then it will post into GitHub so that you will get some comments here. But and another function that we also have a line here. So which means that uh, the end user uh, for peer review, like after you get some initial comments from the review bot, like after review bot posts some comments, if the end user has some questions or has many more concerns for the code, and then the end user can still interact with the review bot here for further comments. So this is uh, treating the review bot as a peer for you. So, and this will trigger the review bot to think more about your code so that you can get more uh, thinking, feedback, more comments from the bot here. So I think this will help a lot to review the code, to speed up the process, to merge your code. And uh, he, uh, if you take a look at the link here, and uh, this is uh, some code, like if you want to build a bot, and you can get some code here. And then this bot will help to review the code, etc. And another use case I want to talk about, how we can leverage AI agent to enable any user can interact with GitOps using some natural language. And the AI agent will have to do the real work to create a PR or do some other things. Let's say um, the end user wants to scale Kubernetes deployments, which have high CPU usage, and end user can send a prompt to ask AI to help. Like the prompt can be like, um, I want to scale some deployments with high CPU usage. So after the prompt was created, uh, the launch agent will ask foundation model here to get some detail for all the Kubernetes deployments. So the foundation model here will tell the agent, okay, you can call some Kubernetes API to get all the deployment info in the cluster. And then the agent here will use Kubernetes API tool to get all the deployment that you are running in the cluster. And also after the agent got all the info of the deployments, and uh, you can that we have line here, the output and also the prompt. So the agent will take, will take the output from the foundation model as another input here. And then it will re return all the deployment info into the foundation model here. And then the foundation model will have to analyze all the deployments and then it will make decision like, uh, it will decide like which deployment should be scaled up and uh, it will also generate a YAML templates to update the resource and then return the YAML file into the agent. And then after the agent got all the YAML files and got all the detailed info, and then the agent will use, a, will use a tool to create a PR. And then after the PR was created into GitHub, and then the GitOps tool here will have to detect the changes that we have been made. And also the GitOps tool will have to apply all the changes into the cluster, and this will have to scale up your deployments as you want. So this is another case we want to cover, so I want to use natural language to talk with foundation model to help us to do some GitOps works. And another case may be uh, more complex. So this is how we can use AI agent to do some runtime optimization for the GitOps system. So with, with AI agent, uh, we can do some kind of uh, data-driven optimization. So the AI agent we'll have to analyze all the data from a observability platform. Like from here, we have a platform which can help us to monitor the whole Kubernetes cluster and also the apps you have deployed. 
So the observability platform here, it will have to uh, report some performance metrics, uh, to report some events, some alerts, or some others. And, uh, and then the foundation model will talk with agent to do some resource optimization for you. So from here, you can see that we have the observability platform here. And when the observability platform get a alert from the Kubernetes cluster, which means that, okay, you may have some alerts, you may have some events for your apps, and then it will have to trigger the GitOps system to do some resource optimization plan with the launching agent here. So we can take a look at the whole process. So basically, after the observability platform get a alert from the, from the uh, Kubernetes cluster, from your apps, and then the observability uh, platform will trigger the launching agent to optimize, and then the launch agent will talk, will talk like with foundation model to get some plan, like how to, how to optimize my platform. And then the foundation model will ask agents to get an analysis resource usage. And then the agent will use some kind of resource usage tool to get all the resource info from the Kubernetes cluster here. And also it will use this response as a new prompt for the foundation model here. And then the foundation model will get all the results and also generate a optimization plan. And it will help you to generate some YAML files and also to create, and, and also it will also ask the agent, okay, I have created a PR and you may want to help me to create a PR for the GitHub. And then after the agent got the YAML files to optimize the cluster, and then it will help to create a PR automatically. And then we can leverage the robot that we have just created to review the PR and uh, after the PR got revealed, and then you can merge it manually, and then GitOps will have to pull the PR and finally apply it to the cluster. So this is how we can leverage observability platform to do some uh, GitOps things. And uh, the last thing I want to talk about, um, so what will be the future of GitOps and AI? So you may see that now the CNCF has just created a cloud native AI work group, and you can get more detail from the link here, and uh, this is the uh, that paper about the CNCF AI group, and the cloud native AI want to use cloud native way to manage the foundation models. Like from the picture here, we can see that I was also using GitOps to deploy the foundation model as well. Like I can just commit some YAML files to deploy the foundation models, and then GitOps will have to manage the whole life cycle of the models here. And for the observability platform that we create here, you can see that it will not only monitor the Kubernetes platform, but it will also have to monitor the whole AI platform as well, including the infrastructure layer, the vector DB layer, the foundation model layer, and also the model orchestration layer. So for the uh, infrastructure layer, you can see that we need to leverage the observability platform to help us to monitor different resources like the GPU resource, the CPU resource, the TPU, the DPU, et cetera. And also if you are using some, some kind of drag apps, if you want to manage your local data, you may also want to leverage some kind of vector DB as well. Like you can use PACON, you can use Chroma DB, and then you can use those DB to have it to uh, persist your local data. And also we always need a foundation model here because we, we need to enable the foundation model can help us to make decision uh, for some actions. And uh, another is that if you are trying to build some very complex apps, like if, you, if, you, uh, if your app contain uh, agent, contain tools, contain uh, vector DB. So you may want to leverage some kind of uh, orchestration platform to manage your app. Like you can use Launchain, you can use Llama Index, etc. So this is the whole AI platform that we need to monitor by the observability platform. Like for the model layer, maybe we need to, many, many, we need to monitor like the model latency, the model token, and also the total cost by the models, etc. So after the observability platform got some metrics from the AI platform. It can also ask the launching agent to make some decision like how to do some fine tuning for my models here. So after the uh, agent makes some decision for the models, and then the uh, agent can also create some patch as well. Like you need uh, uh, to make some changes to the uh, foundation model here because we have a new image for your model and, it, and it's just a fine tuning model here. And then after the uh, YAML files was created and then GitOps will use the latest image and then it will deploy a new model here so that 
you can always leveraging the observability platform here to enable some fine tuning. And then the fine tuning will have to trigger the agent to create a new PR to enable that you can always use the latest model that you have just created. So with this pattern, we are trying to build a kind of a adaptive cluster, which means that we can always build a new model which can fit into, into your cluster very well. Because it can, because it is a new model, it's a new fine tuning model just against your own cluster, against your own data. So this will be more accurate. Yep. Okay, so I think that's, that's uh, the major uh, content I want to share today. Yep, thank you. Yep. Yeah, so I think we still have some time, so I, I can handle some questions. Yep, please go ahead. I'm assuming you have this implemented today. Have uh, you had any problems with people accepting PRs? Because we have a, we, we have a, an AI system giving recommendations to our applications, yeah. and that's been our biggest problem: is the PRs just sit there. Actually, after the PR was created, I think the review board should be able to review the PR and post some comments there. The so, after the the PR owner got the comment, and then it, he should. Interact no, the, with the, the board. The team's the not accepting the PRs. We are considering creating a controller to do this because of the issue with teams not accepting the PRs. They uh -huh. just don't feel they know enough about the infrastructure and just keep pushing it off. Oh, well, I, I think maybe we have different case here because in IBM we have a. Sorry. Oh. Because in IBM we have a tool named as Watson Code Assistant. Yeah. And this tool will have us to generate some code and also have us to review code. And we have just leverage the Watson Code Assistant build a review board and it can have us to review the code. But actually I'm not clear why, like why the PR cannot be created against the- PR The PR can be created. Yeah. I'm asking because we have also an AI system at Intuit giving recommendations yeah. on the, um, sizing and number of pods and so on. Yeah. And what's been happening is the PRs are just sitting there and we have to nudge people to accept the PRs. Oh, okay. I, I'm just wondering what, what, if you have that problem and what do you do about it? Actually, I think we don't have that problem yet, but, okay. but the major problem for us is that actually <coughs> at first we don't enable So actually, we don't have the problem yet. The major thing we have is that um, you may see that for the review board that, that we have created. So at first, we only enable the board can help us to do some kind of initial comments. Like after the PR is created and then the board will have to review the code and then put some co comments there. But we don't have the, the, the line here. Like the PR owner will not able to talk with the board to put some more comments. I think that's a problem because if you don't talk with the bot and then you may not, sometimes you may don't know like what, what the bot is talking. So we just create a new line here so that the end user can talk with the bot and do more interaction with the bot. So, so this means that we can use more prompts to trigger the bot can think more and, and also post more comments like performance tuning or, or some other errors. So with some kind of a, interaction between the user and the bot, we can always have some good quality PR. Good. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.